All right, so I, I am recording. I just wanted to go ahead and make sure that I push the record button and want to let everybody know that I am recording tonight's meeting. So um, we'll go ahead and get started with the introductions while we wait for everyone else to join us and see who else we have. But we are so excited that we have some students in the audience today. Um, we would do the class anyways, but it's a lot more fun when we have someone to participate. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, if you want to say hello, you're more than welcome. Um, I'll start. Uh, hola, mi nombre es Ayo Deli. Mucho gusto. <laughs> Gracias por venir. My name is Aya Deli. Nice to meet you. Thank you for coming. All right. Uh, y maestra Tutura. Mm -hmm. Te toca a ti. <laughs> Buenas noches. Mi nombre es Viviana. Y estoy aquí para ayudar y aprender con ustedes. Muy bien. Okay. And just to translate, if you didn't get that, she said, my name is Viviana and I'm here to, estoy aquí para, ¿qué dijiste, maestro Viviana? <laughs> para compartir con ustedes. Okay. Para mm -hmm. compartir con ustedes. So I'm here to share with you guys, to share with you. All right. Anyone else want to introduce themselves and say their name? Hola, mi nombre es. No? <laughs> Nadie? Nadie? Nobody? <laughs> well, that's all right. Uh, you can practice. So, um, and it's perfectly fine. I see some people have their screen turned off, so no worries there. Um, okay. Mi nombre es Rachel Estoy aquí con mi hija. No, ella está en. Okay, is everyone there? Sí. Sí, están ahí? Okay. Can you sí. hear me pretty well? I think we got disconnected, so technical difficulties. <laughs> Okay, Maestro Viviana, ¿estás ahí? Sí. Okay, all right, uh -huh. perfect. Um, did everyone else get disconnected or was that just me? Just you. Oh, just me, okay, good. Um, all righty, so I know Rachel introduced herself. Well, we have two Rachels tonight. Um, did anyone else introduce themselves? Hola, me llamo es Andrew y mi esposa Rachel. Okay. Muy um, tenemos un bebé que es dos años. Tiene dos años. Yes, ah. tiene dos años. Muy bien. Okay. ¿Y cómo se llama tu bebé? ¿Cómo se llama? Elliot. Se llama Elliot. Se llama Elliot. Okay. Mm -hmm. Muy bien, Elliot tiene dos años. Pues mucho gusto, Andrew. Gracias por venir. Mm -hmm. De nada. Okay, gracias por venir means thank you for coming. All right, anyone else wants to introduce themselves before we get started? Hola. Okay, Hola, then. ¿cómo estás? Bien, gracias. Uh, me llamo Lando uh, y su uh wait uh yo soy uh el padre de Elliot uh oh. él tiene cuatro años cuatro años es en la clase de maestro Viviana mm -hmm. okay. bienvenida <laughs> Muy bien. And Maestro Viviana just repeated that phrase that we talked about, bienvenida. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, what does bienvenida mean? What does it mean? Welcome. It means welcome. So when I first connected, I said to everybody, I said bienvenidos. So I bienvenidos. said bienvenidos with an OS because OS. I was welcoming everyone. But mm -hmm. uh, note that Maestro Viviana just said bienvenida to Lando, okay, so 
um, bienvenida would be the feminine version of welcome, bienvenida. Um, if you were speaking to one male, you would say bienvenido. But again, if you're speaking to just everyone in general, you would say bienvenidos. Okay, bienvenidos, welcome to everybody. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, well, very good. Thanks everybody for introducing yourselves. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and hopefully you'll be able to see it. So just bear with me one second here, I'm gonna share. All right, thumbs up if you can see my screen. Yeah, okay. In Spanish, we say dedos arriba, dedos arriba. <laughs> okay, dedos arriba. So um, again, I did introduce myself at the beginning. If you haven't met me, my name is Ayadeli Malor and I'm the director here at Wilmington Bilingual Preschool. And I'm so excited to be here tonight. Um, this is one of my passions is just sharing Spanish with anyone and everyone who wants to learn it. So um, my background, I started out as a high school Spanish teacher back years ago in 2003. Um, from 2003 to 2006, I was a high school teacher at Laney High School, and I really enjoyed that. Um, so I'm not going to go into my whole story, but one of the things that I love so much about teaching high school level Spanish was um, teaching grammar. So um, I love to kind of integrate grammar into our conversation whenever I can. I try to explain because I know some people are, are the type of people who like to understand why. And grammar really at the end of the day is the why. It explains why we say things a certain way. So, um, but I've also learned that well, when working with young children and working with families, some people just like to know, hey, can you just tell me how do I say something? How do I say it? Um, and that's great for memorization. So there's, you know, there's more than one way to learn a language. There's in my opinion, the memorization aspect and learning all the vocabulary. And then there's also the grammar. And when you put those two things together, um, you can really come to have a good understanding of how to use the language. All right, so um, tonight's class, the topic will be um, using Spanish at home with your child. So of course, everyone here has a child or grandchild or someone who is a student at um, or related to someone who um, attends Wilmington Bilingual Preschool. So I thought it'd be really great to have a class that covered Spanish phrases that you could incorporate at home so that you could kind of um, find ways to integrate some Spanish at home with your child. So that's what we're going to do tonight. All right, um, I always like to start out with a quote. So here's a quote for tonight. And this quote comes from Frank Smith. Uh, Language is not a genetic gift, it is a social gift. Learning a new language is becoming a member of the club, the community of speakers of that language. And um, Frank Smith uh, was actually a really famous man. He just died probably about a year ago, I think. Um, but he's a famous linguist, so you can definitely look him up. Um, but that's kind of how I view Spanish and how I view our preschool. We're, we're kind of a big club. You know, we're all members of that club. It's a, it's a big community that we have um, of people who love and appreciate the Spanish language, the beauty of it, and also the culture that comes along with it. Um, the food, the, the music, um, the diversity of Spanish. You know, there's not just one Spanish language. We have Spanish speakers from so many different countries. There's over 21 uh, Spanish speaking countries. So um, I do feel like we all just kind of join, we're, we're all members of this club. And something else to keep in mind that I know you all already know, but some people don't know is that anyone, anyone can be a member of, of the language learning club. Even if you weren't born, um, you don't have to be born a Spanish speaker or a German speaker or a Russian speaker, but if you're interested, it's something that you can pick up um, from the beginning. It's not genetic. Um, it's something that you can integrate into your life. Um, so it, it is social. So anyways, thank you for being a part of our club, our Wilmington Bilingual Preschool Club, and we're excited to have you. All right, so tonight our guest teacher is La Maestra Viviana. La Maestra Viviana is originally from Colombia, South America, where she studied preschool education and graduated from the University de San Buenaventura in Cali, Colombia in 2009. Mm -hmm. She currently resides in Wilmington with her husband and two sons. Maestra Viviana, ¿qué edad tienen tus hijos? Tienen seis y ocho años. Okay, muy bien. Entonces, la Maestra Viviana tiene dos hijos. Son hombres, ¿verdad? Sí, dos varones. Dos varones. So there's two words there. Varones, does anyone know what that means? Dos varones, she said. Sí, ajá, uh -huh. dos hombres. <laughs> Yeses? Boys. Boys. Very good. So varones, boys are niños or muchachos, uh -huh. but varones means specifically males. 
So that would be how you say, you know, they're both males. So those, because she said those hijos, hijos in Spanish could be two male children, or it could technically be a girl and a boy. Um, because in Spanish, the masculine always takes dominance. So if you have a girl and a boy, but you're talking about both of them together, you would call them hijos. So daughter is hija, son is hijo. But if you're talking about your daughter and your son, it would be hijos. So anyway, she specified and explained that she has two male children, those my own is. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, continuing, she has a passion for her profession and brings much patience and experience to the classroom. We're excited to work with her at our full-time school. And we really enjoyed having Maestro Viviana. She works at our College Road School with our three and four-year-old students. Um, she's really wonderful. She's very patient with the students, of course, as a mom, she understands. Um, but also, uh, she's so professional. I, I just love, I think she kind of exudes that Colombian. <laughs> <laughs> the Colombian woman. Um, she always comes to school so put together and, and very professional. So we, we appreciate her dedication and, and her for working with the students. Maestro Viviana, no sé si hay algo más que quieres compartir, algo más que quieres decir. No, está básicamente eso. Vivo con mis dos hijos, mi, mi esposo, y vivo aquí en Wilmington y muy contenta de trabajar con, con los niños de de esta escuela. Okay, yeah. So, Maestro Viviana basically said, see if you got this, that she's very happy to be able to work with the children of our school. And then of course she reiterated that she lives here in Wilmington with her husband and her children. Mm -hmm. y otra preguntita, Maestro Viviana, ¿en qué año te mudaste aquí a Wilmington? ¿Cuánto, ¿Cuántos años tienes aquí en Wilmington? Llevo viviendo aquí en Wilmington cinco años. Okay, mm -hmm. All right. Maestro Viviana has been here for how many years? <laughs> Cinco. Muy bien. All right. Okay, well, let's go ahead and get started then um, with our first slide. So tonight's class, we're going to go over, I kind of, um, I wanted to organize it into five easy phrases for, for parents. So what we'll do is we'll start off with a review of our vowels. Vowels are super important in Spanish because um, you have to be able to pronounce the values to get that pronunciation correct of each word. So we'll go over a vowels review. We'll talk about five common versatile phrases that you can use in Spanish. We'll do 10 bonus phrases. And then we'll do some pronunciation practice with Maestra, not Clara, Maestra Viviana. So uh, I have to fix that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, um, let's see. So some recommendations that I have for class tonight. I would focus on uh, pronouncing and repeating the words. I recommend, if you don't mind, uh, you've already done this. You guys are awesome. Uh, everyone except for Maestro Viviana putting Zoom on mute so that that way um, we don't have any interference. And then later, you can go back and watch this since I am recording it. You can watch it later. And then at that point, take notes and make flashcards. Yes, I said flashcards. I'm old school. Um, I was a high school teacher back in the early 2000s. So <laughs> we didn't have apps back then. We had flashcards. And every year on my materials list, I always ask the kids to buy um, one of those old flashcard boxes and a couple of packs of flashcards. And believe it or not, they are super, super effective. So, um, so make some flashcards. If you don't want to do that, there's also programs out there called like Anki, A-N-K-I. My husband's super techie. He likes to use Anki. It's um, a program where you can do digital flashcards. Um, so anyways, but what I would recommend just tonight, just focus on enjoying the class and absorbing everything, um, repeating after Maestro Viviana, and then you can go back later and study some more. Another tip that I have for you is to choose a new phrase to practice for a whole week until it becomes natural. So sometimes people try to do too much at one time, but I always thought it was really effective to just pick a phrase and say, this is the phrase I'm going to practice this week when I drop my child off at school. I'm going to use this phrase with the teacher. I'm going to use this phrase with my child at home until I have it down pat really well. And then you can move on to another phrase. All right, so let's review the vowels really quickly. Las cinco vocales en español. So in mm -hmm. Spanish, there's the same vowels as in English. We just pronounce them a little bit differently. And the great news is they're always pronounced the exact same in every single word in Spanish. So here's your cinco vowels. They are a, e, e, o, u. Okay. A, e, e, o, u. So you'll notice a isn't too different from the English. E, okay, this, this one makes an e sound, e, e. Then this one's completely different. So it's e, e. So this is e in Spanish. 
and then O is pretty much the same as long O like in English. And then O, when you say the letter U in Spanish, if you think about it, when you say U in English, your lips are kind of flat, U. But in Spanish, your lips are rounded, O, O. So that's really important to get the proper pronunciation. All right, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna repeat after Maestro Viviana. Maestro Viviana, no sé si puedes repetir cada vocal y esperar para que los papás repiten después de ti. Sí, claro. A. A. E. E. I. I. O. O. U. U. Muy bien. Ok, ahora maestra, puedes repetir todas las vocales. A. E. I. O. U. A. E. I, O, U. Ok, muy bien. Gracias, maestra. Mm -hmm. All right, so there's our vowels. Ok, so let's talk about um, some five common, some phrases that you can use at home with your child that are pretty easy to use. Let's see. The first one is cuantos. Cuantos means how many. So I always think it's great. This is a great way to integrate math into your day with your child. So when you're doing things like, I don't know, when you're playing games, you have toys, you could ask them, ¿cuántos? ¿Cuántos hay? Yeah, ¿cuántos is how many? And then your child can answer by counting. So that's a great little question um, that, that can, uh, you know, it's easy for the kids to do and children enjoy counting, okay? Another phrase is, ¿dónde estás? ¿Dónde estás? ¿Dónde estás? Where are you? Okay, so again, we have our vowels. ¿Dónde estás? Where are you? And your child can say, estoy aquí. Mm -hmm. ¿Dónde estás? Another phrase is vamos. Vamos means let's go. Come on, vamos. So when it's time to go, you can say vamos, vamos. Um, mm -hmm. It also means we're going to do something. So for instance, if you wanted to say, okay, we're going to eat now, you could say vamos a comer. So vamos a uh, is always followed by an infinitive verb. And that's why I love that phrase so much because you don't have to conjugate the verb. You just say vamos a, and then you add a verb there. Don't have to conjugate it. And then it means let's do something. So if you wanted to say, for example, let's go outside. You could say vamos a salir afuera, go outside. Um, if you wanted to say, uh, maestra, ayúdame a pensar en otra frase que usa vamos, vamos a. a dormir. Ooh, vamos mm -hmm. a dormir. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. Let's go to bed. Let's go to sleep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Otro más, maestra? Vamos a comer. Vamos al baño. Vamos a lavarnos las manos. Vamos a lavar las manos. Vamos a lavar las manos. Let's go wash hands. Okay, mm -hmm. so vamos a is a great phrase because again, it's followed by an infinitive verb that you don't have to conjugate. Okay, another one, quieres. Quieres means do you want something? Okay, so anytime you ask your child if they want something, you would start it off with quieres. Okay, so again, that has a lot of vowels here. Quieres. Quieres. Yeah. The last phrase is tienes. Tienes. Tienes mm -hmm. means do you have, okay? For example, tienes tus zapatos? Do you have your shoes? Okay, vamos, vamos, tienes tus zapatos? <laughs> Let's mm -hmm. go, do you have your shoes? Okay. All right, so we're going to expand on those phrases, but these are the base phrases that we're going to work with tonight. So what I'm gonna do is have Maestra Viviana repeat all the words in red, the Spanish words, and she's going to pause so that you can say them. Okay, mm -hmm. Maestra, lista para repetir? Sí. Uno. ¿Cuántos? ¿Cuántos? Eh, ¿Dónde estás? ¿Dónde estás? Vamos. Vamos. ¿Quieres? ¿Quieres? ¿Tienes? ¿Tienes? Ok, muy bien. And just a couple of notes here really quick. Um, I, I didn't go over in my first, in the other class that we did a couple of months ago, back in February, I did um, an overview of pronunciation of consonants. So I'm not doing that tonight, but 
to save time in the interest of time, but you can always go back and watch it. But remember the V in Spanish is not a hard V. It's not vamos, where your teeth are touching your lip like in English, vamos. The V in Spanish is actually more like a B. It's vamos. Watch Maestra Viviana say vamos and watch her lips, okay? Vamos. <laughs> vamos. Okay, do you notice that? So her teeth did not touch her at the bottom of her lip. It was vamos. That's really important just for proper pronunciations so that you sound even more native and trick everybody. <laughs> um, another quick little note here, donde estas? If you noticed it when she said that, she didn't say donde estas? It kind of smushed together and became one word. And that's because in Spanish, whenever one uh, word ends with a vowel and the next word begins with a vowel, it actually comes together, that's a diphthong, and you say it all together. So that's why sometimes people say, but they were talking to me and I didn't understand because it sounded like one word. Well, that's because it, they, they did kind of push those words together. So listen to Maestro Viviana say, donde estas? And hear how she says that phrase. Maestro, puedes decir número dos? Mm -hmm. Donde estas? Okay, donde estas? <laughs> I think she's trying to enunciate, but Generally speaking, if you were just asking, donde estas, you would kind of say it all together as one word. Donde estas? Mm -hmm. Okay, seguimos. All right, so let's talk about the word cuantos. First phrase, cuantos, how many? We have a little girl here saying, tengo diez años. I'm 10 years old. All right, so a couple of phrases that you can use with cuantos. Number one, cuantos hay? Quantos hay? You could put an, any number of items in front of your child. It could be pennies, it could be cereal, just whatever you want to count, shoes, and ask them, ooh, quantos hay? Mira, quantos hay? That means how many are there? And remember in Spanish, what sound does the H make? No sound at all. The H is always silent in Spanish. So just pretend like that H is not even there. Quantos hay? Okay. Mm -hmm. An another phrase you could use is, ¿Cuántos años tienes? You can practice that with your child. ¿Cuántos años tienes? ¿Cuántos años tienes? That means, how old are you? Um, it literally says, how many years do you have? So in Spanish, you're not years old, you have years, okay? So that's important. How many years do you have? ¿Cuántos años tienes? Okay, and then the answer, like the little girl over here in the picture, tengo diez años. Tengo diez años. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, and there, yeah, I'm just giving some examples here. So cuatro años be four years old. Tengo cuatro años. I'm four years old. Okay, Maestro Viviana, puedes repetir, por favor? Okay. Mm -hmm. Maestro. Okay, Maestro, puedes repetir, por favor? Número uno, ¿cuántos hay? Número dos, ¿cuántos años tienes? Cuatro años. Cuatro años. Tengo, tengo cuatro años. Tengo cuatro años. Muy bien. Ok, gracias. Seguimos. Alrighty, so those are just some examples again with the word cuantos. Moving on, next phrase, donde estas? Donde estas? Where are you? So again, donde estas means where are you? And your child could answer and say, aquí estoy. And you could play a game with them. You could, you could even, you know, hide things or you guys can hide and play hide and seek. Donde estas? Aquí estoy. And see if you can find them. Donde está? So if you're asking where is, Okay, that's the third person singular. Where is would be donde está. Where is mm -hmm. another person or another item? Okay, so for example, donde está tu hermano? Where is your brother? Donde está el perro? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where's the dog? Here's another example. Donde está tu chaqueta? Where's your jacket? All right, so you could always follow it up with a noun. Okay, and tu means your, okay? Donde esta tu? 
to without an accent means your, to with an accent is the pronoun you. <laughs> so keep that in mm -hmm. mind, but they are pronounced the same. So when speaking, it doesn't really matter. Okay. Um, ahí está, there it is, or there he or she is. Okay, so donde está, donde está tu chaqueta? Ahí está, ahí, ahí, over there. Okay, ahí está. Mm -hmm. One other quick little thing um, before I do my next phrase. Donde están? If you're looking for more than one thing, you would put an N on this, okay, and make it the third person plural. Donde están? Okay, if you're conjugating the verb estar, estoy, estás, está, estamos, estáis, están. Okay, so donde están tus zapatos? Because it's more than one. So if you're looking for more than one thing, you would change the estar to están. Um, but to keep it simple, donde esta means where is something. And then if they don't know and you don't know where something is, you would say, no sé, no sé. Okay, so mm -hmm. you might say to your child, donde esta tu chaqueta? Where's your jacket? And your child might say, no sé. Okay, or, or if they don't, you know, you could model that for him and say, no sé, no sé. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Ok, Maestro Viviana, ¿quieres repetir? Esto, sí. ¿Dónde estás? ¿Dónde estás? Aquí estoy. Aquí estoy. ¿Dónde está? ¿Dónde está? ¿Dónde está tu hermano? ¿Dónde está tu hermano? ¿Dónde está tu tu chaqueta. ¿Dónde está tu chaqueta? Allí está. Allí está. No sé. No sé. Ok, muy bien. Gracias, maestra. Ok. All right, siguiente. Um, using the word vamos from the verb ir. Okay, so thinking back to those high school Spanish classes when we're learning verbs, ir is a verb in Spanish. It means to go, okay? Um, so to go, but ir, when you conjugate it, it's irregular. So it, it doesn't look like ir at all. When you conjugate it, it's voy, vas, va, vamos, vais, van. All right, so um, vamos means is the uh, plural, let's go, we go. So, vamos, let's go. Vamos, vamos. Vámonos. Come on, let's go. That's extra emphasis. So, vamos and vámonos really means the same thing, but if you add, if you make it vámonos, that's just kind of making it reflexive, which means extra emphasis. Vámonos, vámonos. Come on. Vamos rápido means let's go, quick. Vamos rápido, rápido. Vamos a... Let's go to, okay, so you can say vamos a, and then you can put a place there. So for example, you could say vamos a la escuela. Okay, vamos a Mexico. Let's go to Mexico. <laughs> um, you could say vamos al parque. Let's go to the park. Al parque. Mm -hmm. Vamos a la casa. Let's go home. So when you pick your child up in school, you might say vamos a la casa. Vamos a casa. Maestro Viviana, ¿tienes más ejemplos de vamos a con un lugar? Vamos a, a la piscina. Vamos. A la playa. Vamos a la playa. Muy bien. Ok, vamos a la playa. Let's go to the beach. A la piscina, mm -hmm. she said. Let's go to the pool. Uh, my daughter's here. She's saying, vamos al baño. Let's go to the bathroom. <laughs> See her elbow. <laughs> vamos al baño. Okay, so vamos a is a great little phrase. And then vamos a ver a, let's go see, and then you can follow that by a person. All right, so vamos a ver a, let's go see, for example, let's go see Maestra Viviana. Vamos a ver a la Maestra Viviana. Okay, vamos always has to be followed by a, and ver also is followed by a when you're talking about a person. So, vamos a ver a la maestra Viviana. Mm -hmm. Okay, and there's one more phrase here. 
Vamos a, you can also use it to say, let's do something. So for example, uh, as Maestro Viviana said earlier, vamos a comer, let's eat. Vamos a jugar, let's go play. Uh, vamos a dormir. Vamos a dormir, let's sleep. Uh -huh. Vamos a show and tell. <laughs> <laughs> let's go to show and tell. Oh, aquí está, uh, vamos a limpiar. Vamos a limpiar. Okay, let's clean up. So you want to tell your child, hey, let's clean up. Vamos mm -hmm. a limpiar. Okay. Muy bien. Okay, listos para repetir. Maestro Viviana, te toca. Sí, vamos. <laughs> vamos. Vamos. Vámonos. Vámonos. Vamos. Rápido. Vamos. Rápido. Vamos a. Vamos a. Vamos a ver a. Vamos a ver a. Vamos a. Vamos a. Ok, muy bien. So, uh, a couple of little notes here just for fun. One thing I did want to mention is this word here, rápido. Have you ever wondered why some Spanish words have an accent, el tilde, and why some don't? Well, in Spanish, every word naturally, the emphasis goes on the second to last syllable, okay? So you look at the syllable. So Spanish is a syllabic language. So vamos, second to last syllable would be va. So that's where you put the emphasis, vamos, okay? But if you ever break that rule, for example, ra Rápido. There's three syllables there. Rápido. It should be here, but instead it's here. So that's why you need the accent. So the accent tells you where to put the emphasis, basically, is, is why that's there. That's why the accent mark there, the tilde is there. Rápido. Or right here. Vámonos. Vámonos. Okay, so that's where you're going to put the emphasis in the word. Okay, uh, using the word vamos with places. Oh, I think we got a little ahead of ourselves. So uh, again, vamos. Here's some phrases that you can use with vamos. Vamos a la escuela. Vamos a la casa. Vamos a la biblioteca. Biblioteca is a long word. Biblioteca. Biblioteca. Mm -hmm. Vamos al parque. Okay, let's go to the park. One quick note, you can't say a el in Spanish. It just sounds very uncomfortable. So anytime you say a el, it becomes al, okay? They just smush those two words together, al. So vamos a el parque, it's vamos al parque. Vamos mm -hmm. al baño. Vamos afuera, let's go outside. Vamos adentro, let's go inside. Vamos a la casa de, so let's go to someone else's house and then you can say who. Vamos a la casa de tu abuela. Vamos a la casa de tu abuela. Let's go to grandma's house. But again, if it was your friend's house, you would say, vamos a la casa de tu amigo o amiga. Ok, listos para repetir. Vamos a la escuela. Vamos a la escuela. Vamos a la casa. Vamos a la casa. Vamos a la biblioteca. Vamos a la biblioteca. Vamos al parque. Vamos al parque. Vamos al baño. Vamos al baño. Vamos afuera. Vamos afuera. Vamos adentro. Vamos adentro. Vamos a la casa de tu abuela. Vamos a la casa de tu abuela. Muy bien. Okay, and again, remember from the last lesson that we did, in with this little squiggly mark over it, that's enye. Okay, that's a whole different letter in Spanish, and it goes nya, nya. Yeah. Like in the word canyon, N Y, nya, baño. Okay, not bano, baño, or like jalapeno. 
<laughs> ok. Seguimos. Using the word vamos with a verb, again, vamos is very versatile, so you can also follow it with an infinitive verb. That's very easy construction in Spanish that you can make many sentences with. So vamos a, vamos a comer. Vamos a hacer pipí. Okay, so let's go potty. We say that a lot with kids. Vamos a hacer pipí. Vamos a hacer pipí. In Spanish, mm -hmm. you make pipí. You don't go pipí. You make pipí. <laughs> so let's go make pipí. <laughs> Vamos a limpiar, let's clean, let's clean up, okay? And it's not necessary to say arriba. <laughs> arriba is the direction of, okay? Because some people, sometimes, you know, Americans, we try to translate every little word, um, you know, literally. So vamos a limpiar arriba. I, I remember I had college kids that would say things like that, but you don't uh -huh. need to say that. Clean up is already built into the word limpiar, okay? Vamos a limpiar means to clean up. <laughs> Vamos a leer un libro. Let's read a book. Vamos a pintar. Vamos a colorear. Let's paint. Let's color. Okay. Okay. Vamos a dibujar. Vamos a ver. Let's go see something. No, vamos a ver. Mm -hmm. Maestro, ¿puedes pensar en otros ejemplos con la palabra vamos a con un verbo? Vamos a... Um... Algo que le dices a tus hijos. <laughs> oh. Vamos a comer. Um, ¿Qué tal? Vamos a, vamos a estudiar. <laughs> o con los niños. Um, vamos, a, vamos a... Vamos a vestirnos, ¿verdad? Sí. Vamos a vestirnos, let's get dressed. Um, vamos a cepillarnos los dientes. Let's brush our teeth. Mm -hmm. Vamos a ponernos los zapatos. Let's put on our shoes. Mm -hmm. Ok, bueno, listos para repetir. Lista, maestra, ya puedes. Vamos a comer. <laughs> Vamos a comer. Vamos a hacer pipí. Vamos a hacer pipí. Vamos a limpiar. Vamos a limpiar. Vamos a leer un libro. Vamos a leer un libro. Vamos a pintar. Vamos a pintar. Vamos a colorear. Vamos a colorear. Mm -hmm. Okay. And again, thinking about those vowels here, the word, um, you know, pipi. Okay. So it's not pipi. It's, remember our vowels? A, E, I. Okay. So the I goes E. E, P. Or limpiar. It's not limpiar. Lim. It's limpiar. A, E, I. So that's why those vowels are so important. They're going to help you pronounce the words correctly. Okay. Vamos a limpiar. Same thing here. It's not a libro. It's a libro. A e i. That's the e. Libro. And finally, pintar. It's not pintar, like pinto beans. I, I've always thought about that. In English, we call them pinto beans, but I actually think it comes from Spanish. It's pinto. Pinto means colored. Okay, like colored. So pinto beans. They're colored beans. But pintar. Pintar. Okay, moving along. I think this is our fourth phrase of the night. Quieres. Quieres comes from the verb querer, which means to want or to love. Okay, but in this case, it means to want something. So let's talk about wants. Quieres. You can ask your child, do you want? And then you can follow it with an infinitive verb or with a noun. So you can follow it with a verb or with a person, place, or a thing. Quieres comer. Do you want to eat? You could say to your child, ¿Quieres comer? ¿Quieres comer? ¿Quieres jugar? Do you want to play? ¿Quieres ayudarme? Do you want to help me? ¿Quieres ayudarme? ¿Quieres leer un libro? Do you want to read a book? ¿Quieres pintar o colorear? Do you want to paint? Do you want to color? ¿Quieres ir a? Do you want to go to? 
and then you can say a place, la biblioteca, la playa, la escuela, la casa, la cama. <laughs> ¿Quieres? And then these are some examples of um, nouns that you could follow up with. ¿Quieres leche? Do you want milk? ¿Quieres jugo? Do you want juice? ¿Quieres agua? Do you want water? Okay. Remember the J in Spanish, we talked about this in our last lesson, lesson makes a H sound. Since the H is silent, the J makes up for it and it goes huh. So hugo, hugo, or jugar. Okay, that J is making the H sound. ¿Quieres más? Do you want more? Okay, our, our toddlers love that word más. They always do the little sign language, más, the toddlers. That means more in sign language, más. You could do both Spanish and sign language. Si sí, quiero, or your child might say, no quiero, no quiero. And they love that word. <laughs> no quiero, I don't want to, no quiero. Okay, Maestro Viviana, lista. Vamos. <laughs> ¿Quieres comer? ¿Quieres comer? ¿Quieres jugar? ¿Quieres jugar? ¿Quieres ayudarme? ¿Quieres ayudarme? ¿Quieres leer un libro? ¿Quieres leer un libro? ¿Quieres pintar? ¿Quieres pintar? ¿Quieres colorear? ¿Quieres colorear? ¿Quieres ir al baño? ¿Quieres ir al baño? ¿Quieres jugo? ¿Quieres jugo? ¿Quieres agua? ¿Quieres agua? ¿Quieres más? ¿Quieres más? Sí, sí quiero. Sí, sí quiero. No quiero. No quiero. Ok. And of course, we all remember, well, I think we all remember, I don't know if you guys are old as I am, but we all remember the little Taco Bell dog. Yo quiero Taco Bell. <laughs> All my high school students always knew that phrase because they remember the little little dog. Quiero, I want. Quiero Taco Bell. Okay, did they do that in Colombia, Maestro? Did you guys have, did they have that Taco Bell commercial down there in Colombia? <laughs> <laughs> no. No tienen eso, okay. Pero sabes de qué hablo, ¿verdad? De ese perrito? Sí. <laughs> Okay, any questions or any um, other examples? Anyone want to add or something or ask? No? Okay, seguimos. Our last phrase of the week, tienes. Tienes comes from the verb tener. Okay, tener means to have. All right, so these are some phrases that you can use with tener. Tienes, okay. Uh, do you have? So again, you can follow it with a noun. Do you have? And then say something. <laughs> ¿Tienes tus zapatos? Do you have your shoes? ¿Tienes tus zapatos? Sí, sí, tengo mis zapatos. ¿Tienes tu lonchera? Do you have your lunchbox? Lonchera. Okay. Notice here, tú is the singular version of your. Okay, there's more than one way to say your in Spanish, depending on if it's singular or plural. So if you're asking if you only have one item, you would say tu. But if you're asking mm -hmm. if you have something that's plural, more than one item, you need to say tus. Okay, tienes tus zapatos, tienes tu lonchera. They both mean your, but one's singular, one's plural. Tienes tu mochila. Do you have your backpack? Tienes tu mochila? Tienes tu abrigo? Do you have your coat? Or tienes tu chaqueta, you have your jacket. It's cold day outside. Tienes tu chaqueta? Ahí está, there it is. <laughs> tienes tu comida, do you have your food? Tienes tu comida, okay? T-U is tu. Mm -hmm. All right. Maestro Viviana, repita, por favor. Tienes tus zapatos? Tienes tus zapatos? Tienes tu lonchera. Tienes tu lonchera. Tienes tu mochila. Tienes tu mochila. Tienes tu abrigo. Tienes tu abrigo. 
o tienes tu chaqueta tienes tu chaqueta tienes tu comida tienes tu comida ok muy bien by the way en Mexico, tienes tu agua tienes tu agua One quick little note. Um, in Mexico, they call a jacket chamarra. Maestro Viviana, ¿ustedes también dicen chamarra o no? Decimos chaqueta. Chaqueta. Okay. Esa palabra es mexicana, ¿verdad? Chamarra. Sí, creo que sí. <laughs> okay. I always hear our Mexican teachers call a jacket chamarra. Chamarra. But chaqueta. Mm -hmm. Directora, preguntan que, que es un peluche. Oh, peluche. We have a question. Por lo, que, uh, por lo que dicen, ¿tienes tu peluche? Entonces, alguien quiere saber qué es un peluche. Ok. Yes, peluche. We use that word a lot, especially at our college road school. Peluche is a stuffed animal. Peluche. Mm -hmm. And I think about that word, where does it come from? Pelo means hair. So maybe peluche comes from the word pelo because it's something that's stuffed or furry, like a fuzzy little animal. Um, but uh, yeah, peluche is a stuffed animal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, gracias, maestra. So if your child sleeps with a doll or a little, you know, teddy bear, that's their peluche. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, uh, a couple of special phrases with the word tener. So tener also, even though it means to have, there's some phrases that just, you just have to memorize them. So one would be tienes hambre. It means, are you hungry? Literally says, do you have hunger? So in Spanish, you have hung hunger. You're not hungry, you have hunger. Tienes hambre? Tienes sed? Are you thirsty? So you can ask your child, tienes sed? Tienes hambre? Si, sí, tengo hambre. O si, sí, tengo sed. Tengo is the first person. Uh -huh. ¿Cuántos años tienes? We practiced that, that phrase earlier. How old are you? It literally means how many years do you have? ¿Qué tienes? <laughs> ¿Qué tienes? Is one of those phrases just means what's wrong? It's like, mm -hmm. ¿Qué pasa? ¿Qué, ¿Qué pasa? ¿Qué tienes? <laughs> it means what do you have? <laughs> ¿Tienes que? Means you have to. So for example, and then you follow it with an infinitive verb that you don't have to conjugate. So it's a great little phrase to remember. You have to, for example, tienes que escuchar. You have to listen. Okay, tienes que escuchar. Tienes que comer. You have to eat. Tienes que ayudarme. Ayudarme. You have to help me. Tienes que ayudarme. Okay, Maestro Viviana, puedes repetir? Sí. ¿Tienes hambre? ¿Tienes hambre? ¿Tienes sed? ¿Tienes sed? ¿Cuántos años tienes? ¿Cuántos años tienes? Ok. ¿Qué tienes? ¿Qué tienes? Regresó. <laughs> ok. I think I, I disappeared. Here I am. Ok. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All righty, did we all repeat after Master Viviana? Yes, okay. All right, let's see if I can get the screen back up. Here we go. Okay, can everyone see that? Yeah? No, we can't see it. 
No, okay, maybe I think I have to share it again. Let's see what's going on. All right, now can we see? See. Ahora sí, ahora sí. Now, yes. Okay, let's see if we can finish this up. Um, so we went over these phrases, I think that uh, tenere phrases, special phrases. Uh, okay, so very good. So we went over our five phrases, five kind of key phrases that you can in incorporate into your daily life at home. And I just wanted to give you 10 random bonus phrases that you might use with your child at some point. So here we go. The first one is Ben, Ben aquí, Ben, come here, Ben. Okay, Ben means come, Ben aquí means come here. Te gusta? Te gusta means do you like it? Okay, te gusta. Me gusta, I like it, me gusta. Remember, it's not me gusta. What sound does the letter E make? A, E, me gusta. Okay, so make sure we're saying that right, me gusta. Come, eat, come, come. Te toca, or tu turno. That's how you would say your turn, te toca, te toca a ti. Me toca, or mi turno, me toca. Okay, that means my turn. Terminaste? We say that a lot at school, right, Master Viviana? <laughs> All done, finished with your work, with your food or whatever. Terminaste? Terminaste. Terminaste. Como hace? So if you're practicing animal sounds, I know toddlers love to talk about animal sounds and we're doing that this week since it's Zoo Animals Week. Um, we say, como hace? That means, what does the cow say? Como hace la vaca? Moo, la vaca se moo. Como hace? Como hace el león? Rar. Okay, the lion goes rar. Como se dice? That means, what are you supposed to say? So for example, if you give something to a child and they don't say thank you to you in Spanish, you might say, como se dice? Gracias. Okay, that means like, what do we say? Thank you. Como se dice? Gracias. Okay, so anytime someone mm -hmm. gives something to your child, you could prompt them by saying, como se dice? Gracias. Gracias. De nada. Uh, you can integrate some manners with your child. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. And you something you can say, gracias de nada. All right. Yes. Last slide. Maestro Viviana, te toca. Vamos. Ven. Ven. Ven aquí. And a key. Te gusta? Te gusta? Me gusta. Me gusta. Come. Come. Te toca. Te toca. Tu turno. Tu turno. Me toca. Me toca. Mi turno. Mi turno. Terminaste? Terminaste? Como hace la vaca? Como hace la vaca? Como se dice? Como se dice? Gracias. Gracias. De nada. De nada. Okay, muy bien. All righty, so um, my last slide again, I'd just like to share some fun resources for you. My favorite YouTube channel for learning and practicing Spanish is Butterfly Spanish. Definitely check it out, she's awesome. She's a Spanish teacher from Mexico and she's uploaded at this point hundreds of videos. Um, I used to follow her when she had just a few little followers and now I think she's got close to a million. So um, she does really great short and sweet Spanish lessons on pretty much every topic in the world. So you can learn a lot of additional Spanish from her, a lot from beginners to advanced. So check out that website. And then here's just a random, um, you, uh, it's a hundred easy Spanish phrases to use with your baby. So if you're wanting to find even more phrases, uh, more than what you learned tonight, check out that website. All right, well, um, we have about five minutes left. So I just wanted to see any questions, anything that you wanted to learn tonight that maybe we didn't share um, or just a question about something that we mentioned tonight. Les toca, it's you guys' turn, les toca. Tu turno. <laughs> turno.
Nadie tiene una pregunta. No hay preguntas. No hay preguntas. <laughs> I have one question, but it may be a little advanced for tonight. Yeah. Um, how are there any ways of doing gender neutral pronouns in Spanish? And like, how how do you do that? Yeah, Lando, I'll tell you, I've been thinking about that too, because I'm thinking, man, Spanish is such a gender specific language, you know, with the masculine and feminine. And I've been wondering how, how, do, how are they handling that right now? Yeah. Um, because I know we have the whole Latinx thing, right? Instead of saying Latinos, yeah. some people grabbed onto the Latinx, but I think honestly, that's more Very than American. Yeah, that's more of the media, like yeah. the regular, you know, people are like, no, yo soy Latino or Latina. They don't want to use Latinx. Yeah. Um, so I don't know, but I will definitely look into that because I'm, I'm curious too, if that's, if that's catching on down there, or if it's kind of an American idea, an American thought more so. Okay. Even if, if, if anywhere, I would expect maybe in Spain, they might be doing it. Spain tends to be a little bit more progressive. Um, you're, a lot of your Latin American countries are pretty conservative um, and they're pretty, pretty set in their ways as far as change goes. But Spain, it's, it's in Europe, it tends to be a little bit more progressive. So I would expect something out of there. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Any other questions? We like a challenge. Anything you want to know how to say to your child that you just like, oh, I wish I could say that in Spanish. How many stickers did you earn at school today? Ooh, okay. We'll start with that one. And I think maybe Andrew had a question too. Um, okay, so how many stickers did you earn today? Uh, it would be cuantas. Okay, first of all, stickers is a funny word in Spanish, all right? Masha Viviana, how do you say stickers? Etiquetas. Etiquetas. Okay, mm -hmm. so you can say cuantas etiquetas ganaste hoy. ¿Verdad, mm -hmm. Masha? Sí. Cuántas etiquetas? Okay, how many stickers ganaste? Did you earn mm -hmm. hoy today? Cuántas mm -hmm. etiquetas ganaste? Um, mm -hmm. However, it's funny because oh, cuántas etiquetas te falta para ser el líder? Mm -hmm. Cuántas etiquetas te falta para ser el líder? How many stickers mm -hmm. you have left before you're the leader? Since we use mm -hmm. that in our classrooms, so cuántas te faltan? Oh, ¿Cuántas necesitas para ser el líder? ¿Cuántas necesitas? How many do you need para mm -hmm. ser el líder? Maybe in my notes after the class, I can jot that those phrases down, Lando, for you to have. Mm -hmm. ¿Cuántas etiquetas? But also what's so funny is some teachers don't call them etiquetas, they call them stickers. Stickers. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. ¿Ustedes dicen eso, Masha Viviana, también? Sí. Este ese etiquetas es el término que usamos en la clase. Okay. Y también creo que he escuchado sellos. ¿Sellos? Lo que pasa es que sellos es más como cuando se lo colocamos como en la manito, como o cuando de, hacemos decoración en, en el arte. Para nosotros más sellos así. Entonces, ellos son el... estampas, ¿verdad? Estampas. Exacto, sí, es exacto. Ok. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so sellos are stamps. Some people talk about mm -hmm. sellos or estampas, stamps. Mm -hmm. Ok, Andrew, did you have a question for us? Yeah, I'd like to ask him why he's crying. Why are you crying? Oh. <laughs> ¿Por qué llora? Or stop crying. <laughs> <laughs> that's good it's always good to ask why first and then you can ask them to stop uh so we want to get to the bottom of it what's wrong what's wrong okay that's not a big deal stop <laughs> um okay uh por qué lloras that would be the easiest way to say it. por qué okay. por qué lloras por qué lloras mm -hmm. um a little bit longer you could say por qué estás llorando verdad maestro viviana sí ¿Por qué estás llorando? Why are you crying? Mm -hmm. Same thing. Or ¿Por qué lloras? Um, lloras comes from the verb llorar. Double L-O-R-A-R. -R, so that would be the first person uh, 
yeah, first person. So lloras, tú lloras. Um, and then stop crying would be para de llorar. <laughs> ¿Verdad, maestra? Sí. O deja de llorar. Deja. Deja mm -hmm. de llorar. Stop crying. Deja de llorar. Mm -hmm. Para de llorar. Or um, ya no llores más. <laughs> Ya no llores más. Don't cry anymore. No llores más. Deja de, deja de llorar. Deja de llorar. That's a good one, Andrew. I hadn't thought about that one. <laughs> we'll have to add that to the slideshow. I mean, he, he's in the younger class, so I'm sure the older classes don't deal with that as much. Uh, you'd be surprised. <laughs> But you're right, por qué is a great question in general to add to the vocabulary, por qué? In fact, with our older and more advanced kids, I often encourage the teachers to use open-ended questions like por qué, you know, because that encourages longer sentences from the children. It, it encourages not just a yes, no answer, you know. So something like, uh, que color es este? That, what color is this? That there's one answer. But por qué, that, that encourages a child to think a little bit more, why? You know, we're reading a book. Why is the kid sad? ¿Por qué está triste el niño? And, and they have to think. So, ¿por qué is a great question. In general, English is a good question too. Why? <laughs> Open-ended. Any other questions? Well, all righty. Um, my husband's giving me the eye, so I think that means it's time to, to wrap it up here. But... Uh, <laughs> We passed our time, but thank you so much to everybody for coming. Muchísimas gracias por venir. Maestro Viviana, ¿quieres decir algo para terminar? Sí, gracias por asistir a, a la clase y por su puntualidad, por su asistencia y por su participación. All right, she said thanks for coming to the classroom. Thanks for your punctuality, for being on time, uh, for your attendance, and for your participation, por tu participación. Mm -hmm. Okay. Bueno, muchas gracias a ti, Maestro Viviana. Gracias por tu ayuda y por tu apoyo esta noche. Es con mucho gusto. De nada. <laughs> okay. Bueno, gracias, papás, y adiós. Gracias. Adiós. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Okay. Ya nos vamos. Maestro, hiciste súper bien. Muchas gracias. <laughs> gracias, directora. Nos vemos mañana. Okay, hasta mañana. Que descanse. Gracias.